Well hello and welcome back to the Rest of Cider workshop and this is the first video of 2021 so I'm taking a look back at what happened through last year and seeing what projects are coming up this year. Plenty going on in the garage with the Land Rover, the Morris Minor, the Toylander, we're looking back at the MGB GT which very sadly left um, during 2020 in June um, and looking at all the other little bits and pieces projects and some exciting snippets of what's to come. So let's move down to the storage and have a look at the Toylander to start with. Okie doke, so starting off down here in the storage shed, we are with the Toylander one. Um, made significant progress in this in 2020 and then stalled a wee bit towards the end of the year. It's down here more to create a bit of space in the garage at home, but also because I ran into a bit of a problem. Um, so the Toylander one is a half scale version of an 80 inch Series 1 Land Rover. Um, I'm building it for my son and the intention had been that he was going to get it on Christmas. 2020 as in a week ago but as you can see that didn't really come to fruition. Um, there's a lot of work has gone into it, pretty much over well over a year has gone into it now. Um, the bodywork is all made of plywood, it's 12 mil marine ply um, which is the highest quality stuff I could get to build it. Um, I've painted it all myself, I cut all my panels by myself. The only time I got any professionals involved was my brother-in-law as a joiner and he used as a router to create this nice rounded edge for me. Everything else is done by myself. Spray painted it and that's in RAL1015 um, light ivory which is as close to the original Land Rover limestone as I could get. And the re reason it's going to be Land Rover limestone is it's going to match my own Land Rover in due time. Quite a bit of fabrication work has gone into this so I've made the um, windscreen frame according to the plans from Toyland themselves. The grab handle is fabricated from scratch and also the bumper which I am particularly proud of. I think it looks really really good. Um, all the woodwork like I said I'd have bought the two axles so rear axle is just a steel tube and this is the braking system as you can see here and that swings in and out to rub against the inside of the wheel. Um, handbrake, foot brake, steering I did buy from Toylander um, just to make sure that it's a, a good job. So the steering wheel there at the front axle with the steering mechanism is quite visible down there. The really cool thing about this, the windscreen hinges up or down and it looks like a, a proper Land Rover. Really looking forward to getting this finished. Now the reason it's down here and I've taken a bit of a stall on it is there's been a paint problem and you can see this rag is still stuck to the paint because the paint hasn't dried. There's been a reaction between the colour coat and the varnish, or not the varnish, the clear coat, the lacquer. Um, and it turns out that I was, wasn't was aware, wasn't told that my supplier had changed paint type. And the paint on the bonnet and the five wheels, as in four wheels for all around the car and one for the bonnet, was single pack paint so it didn't actually need a clear coat. So I put the clear coat on and then it has reacted with the colour coat and has never actually dried which is really annoying. It's dried here because this was proper acrylic type paint and that was fine but you can see these cracks in it and it's sort of nearly shrunk and reacted so really annoying. Um, so what I'm going to do is take the bonnet off, take the four or the five wheels again and strip the paint off which is pretty heartbreaking because not only does it cost time but also money. I have to take all the fixtures and fittings off to make a proper job of it. Um, so once the Land Rover is back on four wheels again, um, that project, part of the project is done and they'll get back to the Toylander. And I want to get it finished for this summer so my wee boy can enjoy it. So unfortunately, yes, it wasn't going to be ready for his Christmas present, but um, it should be ready in due time. Hopefully be finished in 2021. So that's job number one once the Land Rover is back up and working, is to get the Toylander finished. The other thing I want to improve is this tailgate. Um, it's not particularly well fitting. There's quite a big gap the whole way around. Um, I did make it according to plan, but I just think I could make it a little bit better. So that's the other thing I'm going to do. Um, this is made of 12 mil ply plus a 4 mil, so that's obviously 16 mil. Um, against this 12 mil here, there's obviously going to be a step. Um, the top plate here doesn't quite fit. So I'm hoping to get another sheet of 12 mil ply. In fact, I have some spare sitting at the back of the trailer. And I'm going to get my brother-in-law once again to see if he can router out these squares for me. 
I think it would look really smart and it would fit flush with the back panel and just really work better. Um, other things I have to do to this is buy two motors and two batteries. It's going to be the 24 volt setup. It's going to be expensive, but um, it's going to be worth doing. So all the electronics still have to go in. That's the most expensive bit. And then that's pretty much it. Um, a bit of wiring, get the wheels on and that should be us. So not a lot left to do, just some tedious time consuming correction work. And then we'll be on the road with the Toylander one, which I'm sure my son will be hugely excited about. Just while I'm down here, I'll talk about the trailer. It's not something that features all that often on the channel. Um, it's a 1950s rice trailer and it was built to match my Land Rover. When I say built, it was restored. It is an original rice trailer and I took it right down to the chassis. And basically everything you can see bar the tow bar is new. The wood is all new, the frame is new, um, the wheels are the original, the mud guards are new, um, but the chassis is original and the axle is original. Um, so pretty snazzy, it doesn't actually get that much work. Um, I use it in the summer and take it to the beach and fill it with all my beach gear. It's very handy behind the car and it's nearly like a mobile changing facility, which is pretty neat. Gets you a few looks on the beach. Um, so probably need a bit of maintenance this year. Probably take the bearings out, get them greased, put them back in, check the clearances and tolerances. Um, uh, rust proof the bottom of it, maybe get a coat of paint, but nothing hugely significant in terms of renovation work. With my own lander, we're going back to the limestone of the toy lander. This may need to change colour. Um, it was originally green completely, um, metal and woodwork, and then with sort of a greeny hood on it. But I might just do green and black um, because I'm not going to pay to redo that hood when it's perfectly fine. So that's probably what I'm thinking of that. I'm also going to start running it again with the hubcaps because there's no point in having the period correct hubcaps and not actually using them. Right, let's go and have a look at the Morris Minor. Okay, so the 1954 Morris Minor hasn't featured a whole lot on the channel this year, um, mainly because it's been behaving itself very nicely and hasn't required much work. Um, as you can see, it's up here in its winter home. It's nice and warm in there and it lives in this little trickle charger. Hasn't been out much recently on salty roads. I tend to look after its bodywork. Two and a half years of lying underneath it with a MIG welder will do that to you. In terms of what's coming in the year ahead for this, um, I would like to put poly bushes in the rear suspension. In 2019, I um, did put poly bushes in completely through the front suspension and it, came, and it really transformed the handling at the front end of the car. But I think the rear of the car could really do with some polyurethane bushes. So that's a job. Won't be particularly difficult to do because I suppose there's only six of them. But as long as those nuts and bolts aren't too seized or difficult to get out, that's always the, the sticker with these things. The other thing that uh, we've noticed is whenever we take this out and I park it pointing downhill there's a little petrol leak from the tank that's obviously a safety issue and that's another reason why it hasn't seen a lot of miles so I have got a nice second-hand fuel tank which is going to go into this if I can't repair the original um, I might be able to repair it just with a little bit of epoxy uh, JB weld type compound because it is petrol resistant um, but it would need to be 100% fuel safe before we take it out again so this is another job that needs done that's probably going to come along after the toy lander maybe once the weather starts to warm up we'll be wanting to take the morris miner out again because it is a favorite of ours and it seems to be fairly popular on the channel although for the number of morris miners on the road it doesn't seem to be just as popular as the likes of the land rover or the mg it was before we sold it in june and we'll come to talk about that in a little minute sadly missed here on the channel but yeah morris miner nice and reliable Hasn't really required any major work since it was restored coming up in five years ago um, and still looks as good as ever. So yeah, old faithful here. Back at the Land Rover then. And as you can see, this is what I was talking about working my way through the front axle. This is my current sort of mini series here on the channel. And the front axle and suspension are getting a free, f sorry, a free, it definitely wasn't free, a full rebuild and refresh um, to bring it up to scratch with the back axle. And that was my major job on 2020. Two new springs and a complete refresh of the back axle. And in, in order to sort of level it out, the old springs were quite flat and split and rusted, despite having only been on for 10 years. Um, but the Land Rover lives a slightly easier life now than it did for the first few years and then it's always inside in my nice dry garage. So back suspension's done, front suspension's getting sorted. 
This year, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, will be the year that this Land Rover returns to its original cream or limestone colour, which is to match the Toylander, um, and, but it'll be the same colour as the wheels, um, RAL1015, which is what I said. Um, the other thing that needs done in the Land Rover, I made uh, quite a popular video on YouTube about engine conversion options for series Land Rovers, and I'll try and pop the link up in the top corner. Um, because there is a crack in my block, and it's not going to show up in the light here, um, but it's like minus two outside, so I'm not opening the doors. There's a crack in the block just behind the alternator down there, so I'm going to aim to repair that, um, rather than jumping straight in with an engine conversion. If I can repair it, great, because it is the original engine, and I quite enjoy the character of the 2.25 litre diesel. It's slow, it's thirsty, but it's a Land Rover, it's never going to be setting any land speed records and I really just quite enjoy that. So finish the front suspension, try to repaint it if I can, but definitely trying to fix the crack. Um, maybe even putting a second bench seat in the back and um, just trying to make the Land Rover a bit more usable. And the other big thing I have, and this is a sneak preview of a video that's coming quite soon, is, let's see if I can open up this box. This was a find on eBay set of, can you guess it, Ferry Freewheeling Hubs. In really good order, very pleased with this. Um, it took a lot of finding to get them in decent nick. A lot of them, the caps are scored and bashed a bit, but these aren't too bad. They're a little bit used. Um, there's a few scratches and dings on it, but overall, very good condition. Um, surprisingly difficult to find, given the number of the Land Rovers that they're fitted to. Those are the 24 spline ones. So I've got two of those to fit on once the axle rebuild is done. So I'm really looking forward to getting those on. And we're going to have a little chat about the debate about freewheeling hubs and their uses. I'm putting them on because they're a period accessory. And I already have the ferry overdrive fitted. And you can just see the knob there. Oh, nothing to stop me opening the door. And you can see the knob of the ferry overdrive there when I rebuilt the overdrive when I put it in. Um, so I'm putting it as a period accessory. I'm not putting it in for massive amounts of miles per gallon or any of that. Um, but we'll have a chat about that in a separate video um, because I always like to spark a bit of debate. It's interesting what you guys come up with in the comments. Elsewhere here in the garage, the garage itself got a full repaint on the floor. <laughs> Probably not the most exciting thing, but it's smartened the place up. I've since destroyed it again with painting things, but it's a working garage. Um, the models have moved over there. They were here, but it means it's easier to get in and out past the cars. What else is coming this year? In tw well, when I say this year, yep, 2021. Those are the wheels. Um, in there with the ruined paint. You can see I've started to sand it, but the paint hasn't actually dried, despite six months on. Um, and these, again, you can see quite noticeably there, that paint, you can still dig your fingernail into it. That's how soft it is and it's all that cracked and haziness, so all needs sanded down, but that's okay. We'll get there. Um, that's the full five wheels. Um, five? One, two, three. Yes, four, five. And these two here are the gears for the drive. I'll actually show you. I think it's this wheel here. <coughs> that's the one with no lacquer on it. It actually looks quite smart. Um, so that's what happens when you treat the single stage paint the way it should be, rather than mistakenly trying to lacquer it. So, lesson learned, but these things happen. Oh yes, forgot about this. Recently had a big birthday, and my parents got me a lovely new back door for Land Rover. This was from Paint Man Panels. Paint Man are quite well known in Land Rover circles for producing, obviously, paint. And they also send, sell reproduction panels, so this is a brand new back door for the Land Rover. Obviously needs painted and it's going to be the same colour as the wheels, the limestone, so that's going to be a job and I'll make a, a video about painting up that. I'm going to try and do it myself with the coach enamel, see how that turns out, although I might do a bit of a practice run on another panel. And this is why I'm replacing this door. It's all banjaxed and starting to go along the bottom. This is the original door, so 1976 to 2021, what's that, 45 years? I think it's done all right. It's quite rusty along there. There's a few bodged repairs, not mine, but um, I think it's just time for a new door. Smarten up the back end a bit. There's a few too many potato bags have fallen against that door, and that's time as well. Other things in the garage. 
the three and a half inch gauge LBSC Highland Lassie. Quite looking forward to looking into doing a bit of work on this. This is going to be a very long term project. Um, I would love to buy a lathe and or a milling machine, but we'll just have to see what time shows and allows me to do. Um, but I'd like to make contact with the local model engineering club and maybe make a bit of a move on this. So that's one project. And the other thing over here is the other Land Rover differential, which is the original rear differential of my own, but because it ate its own pinion and crown wheel, um, it's needing replaced. So that's slowly getting rebuilt. It's just sitting there waiting to get finished off. So plenty to look forward to. So as I mentioned in the video, um, the other big change in 2020 was that we saw the end of the MG. Sadly, the MGB GT, the 1969 Mark II model, had to leave us. It wasn't getting the use it was deserving, although it was a really good car, I absolutely loved it. Um, having a, a growing young family meant that the car just wasn't getting used as much as it could. It only had two usable seats, and with laws and responsibilities about child um, seating and old cars, it just wasn't going to be usable in the long term. Old cars, and I'm sure you'll agree if you're into the classic cars, they don't appreciate sitting and certainly the MG when it got left for any period of time there was always issues starting it up and um, batteries were getting flat or bearings needing replaced brakes didn't enjoy it so I thought rather than running into big bills and seeing a car I really enjoyed deteriorating I thought it was time to move it on and I was really happy to move it on and actually to be honest make a bit of a profit on it um, I covered all my costs of ownership, so really for the th roughly three years that I owned that car, I think it was three years and three months, that car cost me nothing um, in terms of how much I sold for versus how much I paid for it. That covered insurance, fuel, um, I did cylinder head rebuild, uh, rear axle and suspension sort out, it was all covered in the profit I made, so I think that was amazing. And it's also testament to the way the classic car market is going in the minute, and that's going to be something really interesting going into 2021. But who knows what's coming in the year ahead. Um, there's plenty more videos coming on this channel, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Hit the subscribe button, give me a like and I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio now.